So the question is on the change of the, the property itself. Um, I don't see anything that's blaring to tell me no and why it shouldn't be a rezone for this. And I think the association's done their homework on why they're doing it. And I think the not my backyard is a reasonable claim in this. So I'll actually be voting for it. And when the chairman's uh, amenable to it, I'll make the motion to um, actually to agree with the appeal that it should not have been denied and actually um, request to be turned over. Kind of on the same page as John, but you know, normally I'd be pretty reluctant to reverse a planning commission decision because you know, I appreciate what those commissioners do. They provide a valuable service to our county, and we ought to respect their decision. But after after reading the minutes and listening to Mark and Katie, I mean, it's it's pretty. It seems to me that no one really wanted to reject that application that they just wanted more information and, and i think that's borne out with the process they went through they, they tried they tried a motion to approve and couldn't get a second they tried to uh, provide a motion to table they couldn't get a second and like mark explained that one of his fellow commissioners said do you want me to give a motion to deny and that finally passed so to me it indicates that I, I don't think that they're going to mind us stepping in and, and settling this form in, in this case. In the, so yeah. I uh, I do agree with um, much of what's been talked about today about the scope of uh, the planning commission and even the uh, county commission in regards to zone changes and the, the context of those applications and what's required and not what's required in economics. I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, that that position um, that I mean we don't we wouldn't do that for anybody whether it was someone that was going to build uh, you know needed his own change to put in a maverick we wouldn't ask him if they have the uh, economic abilities to to do that so I I, I do agree with that uh, fundamental um, principle and it's about you know that compatible the compatibility uses uh, I don't even believe when you request a zone change you don't even have to say what your intended use is. You're just requesting a zone change. I think um, in this case, Spring Creek Association is being extremely transparent, saying what their intended use is because they don't they don't need to do that. It just has to be a permitted use. And, and I know Katie kind of touched on this a little bit, but I, I just want to touch, uh, you know, we I suspect, Corey said that we didn't even have the P zoning um, until, you know, pretty recently, but back when the association was developed back in the 70s, it's very likely it probably would have been zoned this because it's appropriate. It's a public zoning. It's for public and governmental type uses and buildings. This, this is probably, if the zone existed at that time, that's probably what it would have been zoned. And I would just also say that under this open space, because I, I think that I think the title does kind of um, create an expectation that may not be fully understood, but there's the whole list of accessible, uh, that uses that you can do on that particular zone today and one of those uses that's permitted today is actually a family cemetery